welcome or welcome back to my channel Stitch and Style by me Nadia and today I've got a Friday sales for you and firstly I just want to say thanks to Jen from Today in Jen Sewing Room who set up this hashtag. So before I get into what I've been up to this week I just wanted to say a huge thank you to each and every person that has subscribed to my channel I really do appreciate it and um, I was delighted last week when I hit 1,000 subscribers. For those of you who've been on my sewing journey you will have seen my progress both in my vlogs and what I've been sewing and um, I've been really humbled by everybody's support um, especially of my Oh So Me sewing challenge which helped to raise a huge amount of money for bowel cancer and without starting this channel I don't think I would have had the confidence to run a challenge and I don't think I would have had the confidence either to set up a sewing social so um, my sewing social now has sold out so I'm delighted about that I'm really sorry if you were somebody who wanted to come along but um, I'd sold out of places. I would have really have loved to offer everybody a place but I am really limited on the number of spaces I can offer due to especially table space. So getting back to hitting 1000 subscribers, yes it only seems like yesterday when I got my first subscriber so to now have 1000 is a real milestone and I wanted to say thank you to everybody by doing a little giveaway. I want to give away a gift voucher which I purchased myself from the fold line. Hopefully everybody will be able to participate no matter where you are in the world because they offer um, PDF patterns as well as paper patterns um, and they have patterns from all different kinds of um, pattern designers with the gift voucher of £25 I hope you'll be able to treat yourself to one or two sewing patterns. If you're interested in participating in the giveaway stay tuned to the end and I'll tell you how you can join in. So let me tell you what I'm wearing today this is the Oriana blouse by Fibre Mood and it's in this gorgeous Liberty fabric which is Spanish tiles and I got this from Guthrie and Garney and I'm just wearing a ready to wear top over and it's got some lovely big sleeves which I absolutely love. This week is going to be all about my So Fruity Make which you can just see here. So I ordered this fabric while I was on holiday and I must have had the holiday vibes because I went for this gorgeous print which is very colourful it's got pinks and oranges in it and also some green on the light background. I absolutely love it. So we've got um, chilies, as you can see, um, all different types of fruits, including, I love these little raspberries and the cherries. All look absolutely gorgeous. So I was waiting a while for this fabric to arrive. I think they did have a little bit of a backlog um, at Rainbow Fabrics because they did a bit of a discount. I think I got 40% discount on this fabric and I got five meters of it because I wanted to make a long swishy dress and the one that I wanted to make was the Nyx dress by Closet Core and I've had this since I attended the Guthrie and Garni 10th birthday party and I bought the blouse kit from them and it included this pattern and I'd not really considered this pattern before that event but seeing the pattern made up and Lauren was wearing it on the day um, a lovely dress and I just thought oh how beautiful um, and I've wanted to make it up ever since. Now the only thing that I found a little bit concerning was it is a little bit on the low side at the front for me um, and I was a little bit concerned because you've got these buttons and I was a bit concerned about gaping and everything. So um, I said that to Becca um, who ran the jean sewing workshop and she said oh you can just slip stitch it closed. So I thought okay yes. I thought this fabric and the pattern were an absolutely perfect combination. So I also 
um, so Rachel stitched up she'd made this dress and I watched her vlog on it um, when she released it back earlier this year and I thought to myself then I must re-watch this vlog before I make the dress and I remembered to do so so on Monday evening I watched the vlog so it also helped me decide how much I needed to lengthen the pattern because Rachel is a similar height to me I'm five eight and a half and I think she's about similar height so a huge thank you to Rachel for such a brilliant pattern review and if you haven't watched that I would recommend that you go and watch that too. I'm sure you'll be encouraged to make this dress. Getting into fabric requirements, um, as I said I bought five metres of the fabric and I treated this print as directional even though the fruits and the chillies do go both ways. So I probably didn't use the most efficient cutting layout but I don't know whether I would have struggled to get it cut out in four metres. I have got a very long piece left but I haven't got much width um, of the fabric left. So, um, and I think it does say for my kind of size is for over four metres. So yeah, if you're fancy making this dress, it could get expensive if you were using pricier fabric. I'll just quickly go through my measurements. So my high bust is 36 and a half, my full bust is 38, my waist is 30 and my hips are 42. So um, that puts me in a size 12 at the bust, size 10 at the waist and a size 14 at the hip. I know that Lauren from Guthrie and Garney sized down two sizes um, but she did use um, a smaller seam allowance at the shoulders and I'm always concerned about if I just go off my bust size because my high bust is only one and a half inches um, difference to my full bust I'm always concerned that I won't have enough space here between the shoulders and between the back and under the arms and round the arms so I was a little bit wary about sizing down two sizes and in the end I cut a size 10 but then I graded to size 8 at the waist. Now I did cut the tears out of the skirt at size 10 but then before I assembled the skirt I realised that you don't put any gathering around the top layer. Um, the bottom of the bodice and the top of the skirt are the same circumference so I had to recut the top tier skirt to a size 8 and um, I just left the others at a size 10 so it's a little bit of a mix up between an 8 and a 10 and I think that just works out as me sizing down one size. When I look back at the photos that I took I think it's partly the pattern of the fabric and the way I'm putting my hand on my hip but it does look like I do have room and I might and I possibly could have sized down another size on the bodice but I'm happy with how it fits especially because you do get the waist definition because you have the elastic around the waist. I'll just talk about the adjustments that I made so I added three and a half centimetres to the length of the bodice but I took out two centimetres at the centre back as a sway back adjustment and those adjustments are usual for me. I know that Rachel said that she might have added a tiny little bit more length to the bodice just so you get a bit more of a blues on effect where you've got the elastic but then you've got some space in the bodice for it to kind of bag over and I do have I don't know if I'm explaining that very well but I do have that at the back but not so much at the front so I might be tempted to add just a little bit more the next time I make it too. Um, I added five centimetres to the top tier of the skirt now I left the other two tiers at the, the length as the pattern's drafted so I'm aware that might make my dress look a little bit uneven because maybe I should have added equal amounts to each tier 
but just for speed I added it all to the top tier and I added and I wasn't going to add any length to the sleeve but after I watched Rachel's vlog I decided to add I think about five centimetres um, of length to the sleeve and I really should have measured myself um, or measured where I wanted it before I added that much length because um, and this is not Rachel's fault and it's not the pattern's fault it's totally on me but I spent a long time on Tuesday evening doing the bottom of the sleeve so you have pleats in it and then you have to attach the cuff and put the elastic through um, to finish the bottom of the sleeve and I'd done all that on Tuesday night and it's taken me a long time to do it and then I attached the first sleeve on and thought I'll give it a try on and the sleeve was just far too long for me. I really could not face undoing all that hard work I'd done on the bottom of the sleeve. So what I decided to do was just unpick the sleeve that I'd attached and then I just cut off both sleeves um, about an inch off the sleeve head and tried to keep the same curve um, of the sleeve. So I shortened them that way and they're still a touch long. Now you do have to be prepared for a lot of gathering um, because you've got two big tiers together and the bottom tier is four big pieces of fabric so that can take a while. And I absolutely love the finish of the bodice with these little rouleau loops and I decided to use these buttons. Um, I've got a variety of buttons all different colours and I decided to use this kind of like brownie orangey colour because I thought this is not a colour I would use very often and I thought it blended quite well but I kept the light pink thread in it. Now um, I've used light pink thread all the way through although I did see Amelia had used an invisible thread which I thought looked interesting but I did wonder whether my machine would enjoy the um, different type of thread um, it only seems to like Gutterman's. I'm really pleased with how this dress turned out and I'll definitely be making some more NYX dresses. I think they're absolutely gorgeous and I really want to make a blouse version as well. Um, maybe without the buttons um, and just loose so I can tuck it into jeans or trousers. I think that'd be a really nice smart look. And I really enjoy challenges because they sometimes push you out of your comfort zone and um, sometimes it's good to have that deadline and yeah I just really enjoyed participating in the So Fruity Challenge so a big thanks to Yvette from Blossom Sandwich for running such a fantastic challenge and um, if you've not got your entry in yet then you'll have to be quick because you've only got a few hours to submit it. I have had a couple of pieces of fabric that have arrived this week and they're also very colourful and I saw them last week I think on the So Confident um, Instagram page. I think it was a reel that they were doing where they were showing new fabrics that had arrived and as soon as I saw them, actually it was a couple of weeks ago because I was thinking about them when I was on the when I was doing um, the half marathon and I thought as a treat for getting through the half marathon I think I will purchase a couple of the fabrics. I just simply couldn't resist and the first one that I've got is this um, very colourful fabric and it's got my favourite colours which are purple and red on it and it's also got green and it's on a creamy white background and it's um, a dead stock fabric and I think it's absolutely beautiful. So um, that was the first one I got. It's got this kind of sh slight sheen on it as well. I um, don't know if you can see that and I think that's going to make something beautiful. They've not decided exactly what but I've got three meters of this I think so I could probably get a dress out of that. And then this is um, the other one that I bought and this one makes me really happy. <laughs> I absolutely adore it. So this is an Italian dead stock fabric and as you can see it's got a little bit of a paisley design on it and um, 
this is a silk and I think viscose mix so yeah because it's silk it was a little bit more expensive but I could not resist the colours in this I think it's absolutely gorgeous I'll just bring it up a little bit closer so you can see it and I think this is going to make a lovely blouse I again I've not decided what pattern I'm going to use but um, I really would like to make a blouse out of this I'm not sure if So Confident have any of these left but I'll link to the So Confident website below so I think that's everything that I had to share with you this week I've not planned my next make yet so I can't share that with you um, so you'll just have to watch this space for what I decide to make next um, to get to the giveaway that I'm going to do I know this is the part that you've all been waiting for how I'd like you to enter is just to say hello to me in the comments and to tell me what you're sewing now or if you're not sewing anything at the moment then tell me the last thing you sewed and I really look forward to getting to know you a little bit better in the comments and if you could do so by the end of the day on Wednesday the 5th of July UK time so I'll collect all the comments that have been made from then and I'll put them in a random generator and from there I'll pick out one person to win the gift voucher I've got for the fold line. Thanks so much for joining me today. I've really enjoyed chatting with you and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.